Fredo as a paracletos. In this, Lord, we are privileged in the name of Jesus. Receive our gathering this morning as we continue in this message. And we are saying, Lord, we want to be of a vessel of the Holy Spirit. We are in, He works through us and works in us for the benefit of the body, for the breakthroughs in our life. And so, Lord God, we thank you this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We continue that we need to be a vessel for the Holy Spirit. The third person of the Trinity, the agency of God, the agency of the spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Apostle Paul gave indications and why we should be aware and know the gift, the spiritual gift. And it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 1, it said, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware. In other words, he does not want us to live this Christian life and not knowing that there is a spiritual gift which benefits our life and benefits the body of Christ as we gather as people of God. That the, the, the spiritual gift is the gift of God which operates within the body in different aspects of this spiritual gift. And it continues and said in verse 2, you know that when you are pagans, that is when you have not believed, you are led astray to mute idols. However, you are led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is accursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit comes with the gift of God, which, which also will serve the body of Christ. It comes to the spirit of the spiritual gift with which we grow in faith, such as we, you know, receiving the gift of faith for the benefit of the body and also applying it to our life. He says, yes, you know, at a time we were pagans, we were unbelievers. But now we are now believers. However, that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is accursed. No one speaking by the Spirit of God will say that. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit comes to empower our work of salvation. Empower you as individuals. Even where you share your testimony, when you share the word of God, the, only, the Holy Spirit brings perfection upon the word. Just as we saw in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 37 to 38, when Simon Peter had finished preaching his first sermon, the Bible says that those men came to him and said, you know, brethren, it's, the Bible says that after he has preached, that their, their hearts were pierced. It's the move of the Spirit of God that made them to submit and say, brethren, Peter, James, John, what shall we do? And then someone Peter led them and said, you know, repent, repent. And after you've repented, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you with gifts. And so it's so important for us to know. And he comes with this gift so that you might live a true life. You may be a vessel and you need to submit yourself to be a vessel. So Paul introduced them and said, I do not want you to be unaware of these gifts. 
is being made available to you. And of course, from verse 4, he describes the varieties of gift from the same spirit. So the Holy Spirit has not come to divide the body, but to unify the body. To unify the body. And, uh, you know, each of us, we are arms, we are legs, we are eyes of the body. And so it's important that we understand this. I do not want to go into the highlights of the gift first, but I want you to be ready. I want you to be ready. So how do you become a vessel? How do you make yourself ready for the, the Holy Spirit's gift? We have been doing that. Let's look at what Ephesians says to us. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Because this gift is for the unity in the body and for the service, empowerment of believers. And it begins with us who have been appointed in such a time to prepare you to be a ready, to be a vessel. I'll take from verse 7. He said, but to each one of us, grace was given according to to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led captive a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. He gave gifts to men. Hallelujah. Verse 9, he said, now this expression, he ascended, what does it mean? Except that he also had descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is himself also he who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might feel all things. So that he might feel all things. He ascended into heaven that he might feel all things. So if you are ready to be a vessel, Jesus is on high to fill you. He said, I will send the Holy Spirit unto you, who shall guide you to all truth, to remind you of all that you have learned. So it is. Amen. Then verse 11. And he says, and he gave some as apostles. He gave some as apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers. Verse 12, it says, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of service, for the equipping of saints, for the work of service, you are the saints. We are the saints. We've received the grace of these offices and to prepare you and to equip you. And so it's in preparation that you become a vessel of the Holy Spirit. Verse 12, it says, for the equipping of the saints for the work of service or the work of ministry. To the building up of the body of Christ. To the building up of the body of Christ. Verse 13 says, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man to the measure of the stature. To the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. We can see here 
that your preparation to be a vessel for the Spirit's gift or the Holy Spirit gift begins with the fivefold ministries in the house of God to prepare you. And when you are being prepared, you make yourself available. And verse 14 says, as a result, as a result, we are no longer to be children. We are no longer to be children. You've become born again. You've been blessed. You are no longer to be children. You need to come to a level where you become a vessel of salvation for the work of ministry. Now, when the Bible is saying here that the fivefold to prepare us, to equip us, to equip us as the saint for the work of service, to the building up of the body of Christ, work of service or work of ministry. Number one, to the building up of the body. Number two, in other words, the building up of you as a saint is not only for within the building of the church. It's not only for the building of the church. You are equipped as a saint even into the marketplace. You are equipped as a saint, as a believer, even in the government, in the business place, in your family, in your community, you are equipped. And the same token that you are also equipped for the edification of the body when we gather together. And this is how you begin to prepare yourself as a vessel of the Holy Spirit wherein he works within you. He works through you. He distributes his spiritual gift. But if you make yourself available, you will not miss it. How do you become a vessel for the Holy Spirit gifts? You need to be sacrificial. You need to be sacrificial. In other words, you know, your life will be sacrificial. You need to be, as, you know, a uh, Sacrificial living. Sacrificial living. And what it is to be sacrificial is to submit to a cause. Is to submit to a cause. To yield to the core. To yield to the core. A call for actions of purpose. In Christ Jesus, you need to be sacrificial. You need to be sacrificial. And for you to be sacrificial in Christ is to become the vessel for his use. To become a vessel for spiritual gift through the Holy Spirit. And it requires of you to be sacrificial, to serve God and willing to be his instrument without any condition except that you are sacrificial. Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. Let me show you that. The book of Isaiah also give us an insight of these gifts. He said, Ho, oh, everyone, verse 1, Ho, oh, everyone who tests, come to the waters. Come to the waters. Everyone who tests, come to the waters. What's that telling us? The water signifies the Spirit of God. The water signifies the Spirit of God. The place of the Spirit. So everyone who tests, let him come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy, and eat. Because this spiritual gift is not a title. It's a privilege that is freely given. But it needs you to come to the waters. It needs you to come to the waters of the service of God. It needs you to come to the waters of the gathering of the people of God, of believers. It needs you to come. 
He said, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without costs. Without costs. Last week I mentioned also to you when Jesus cried out on that fateful day, he said, he who is thirsty, let him come to me. John chapter 7, verse 37, 38 that out of them, out of their being, out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water. He's talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we are saying that you need to be sacrificial. Sacrificial in the sense that you make yourself available to his cause. You make yourself available. The gift of God costs you nothing except your faith and sacrificial living, day-to-day -day sacrificial living. To be in consciousness of who you are in Christ. So it begins with you availing yourself for his service. Availing yourself for his service. Your love for God. For he first loved you anyway, that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to you and to everyone who believes that they may come to repentance and they shall not perish but have eternal life. So your sacrificial living involves you loving God. Loving the things of God. Creating time for the things of God. That's all what God needs from you. He doesn't need your money. He doesn't need your money. It's a privilege. Romans 12. The letter to the Romans. Let's see what the apostle says there. We all know it. Romans chapter 12, verse 1, he said, Therefore I hold you, brethren, by the mercies of God. He hold them by the mercies of God to present your bodies a living and a holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Praise the name of the Lord. And when you look at that, that is an appeal. That is an appeal to the body in Rome, the believers. He made this appeal to them. I want you to look at it from the, the amplified version. I'll read for you. He said, therefore, I heard you. Brethren, which is brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God to present your bodies, to dedicate all of yourselves, set apart, to dedicate all of yourselves, set apart. That's what it is. It doesn't stop you from doing your business or going to your work or pursuing your career as a living sacrifice, to set yourself apart as a living sacrifice. Holy and well pleasing to God, which is your rational act of worship. When it's rational, that means it's left with you to think. It's left with you to know that at this state of my life, I must create time for God. I'm on, at this level of my life, I'm on self God. Don't wait till you are 65 years old. Don't wait till you are 65 years old. So there is the logical reasoning here. When you have received the grace of life, the mercies of God, you've received you know, the benefit of re redemption. You've received the benefit of redemption. So he's put it to us here. He said it is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. 
intelligent act of worship. So Paul made us to understand that, you know, the most, we must go beyond the level we are. But it, it, it demands that we become a sacrificial, you know, believer just to attain the next level. Because if you study the, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, John started repentance with water, but John said something. He that is higher and bigger is coming. The one that he cannot lose in is Sanders. And he mentioned one thing. He said, he shall baptize you with Holy Ghost and fire. He shall baptize with Holy Ghost and fire. That means you, you are already anointed with the Holy Ghost and fire. And this is what makes you ready, but you have to be available. It helps you to conquer, but you also have to become a vessel for the spiritual gift. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Peter was preaching and he demonstrated and he said a word that also resonates with what we're saying here. Having been baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire, what is it meant for? What is it meant for? It's meant to serve. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. When, he, you know, he, he, Peter was speaking here to the Gentiles. And he said to them, you know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and with power and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. He showed us the, 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 the power, how the power works, how the Holy Ghost works, which you have received. Which you have received. You cannot allow it to be dormant. And same Jesus has given to us to serve God and the body of Christ. The same Holy Ghost and fire he has given to us. That's what John, John the Baptist said in Matthew chapter, chapter 3. So he has given it to us to serve, to serve God and the body of Christ. And so we have no reason not to be a vessel. We have no reason not to make ourselves available for the Lord's use. There's a reason why he has preserved our life. Because salvation means preservation. And so we need to understand this moment, this season that we are, that we need to become a vessel. To expand the work and to reach out beyond the walls of the, of the church to be an influence wherever we are. You know, in Romans chapter 8, verse 17, there's a word there that we have been made co here with Christ Jesus. He said, As we be a partaker of his suffering, he said, So shall we be a partaker of his glory. Amen. We, you can't separate it. So be. Asking you that for you to be a vessel, you must be sacrificial. It comes with a whole lot of things. Inconvenience is there. Persecution is there. Some level of affliction may be there. But then there is a glory that is attached to it. We need to become a vessel of the Spirit gift. And we have to be sacrificial. Because to be a co here with Christ is not just for inheritance of material things. 
It's not just for inheritance of material things. We have to be sacrificial. Jesus said in John chapter 17, 22, he said, the glory which you have given me, I have given to them. That, may, that they may be one in unity, that they may be one in unity, just as we are one. And so this, 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 these are the things that you, we need to identify as believers. And we need to learn these things. That unless we become a useful vessel, that we can really see the, the revival and, and, and the break came forth in the body. That we can see the unity of the spirit. That we serve one another. We need to be a vessel. We need to be sacrificial to be a vessel of the spirit of God for the spirit gifts. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Also we saw here the teachings that haven't become a born again in Christ all things have become new. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 16. Therefore from now on we recognize no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him in this way no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The whole things passed away. Behold, new things have come. It says, now all these things are from God. Now all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So after your life has become new, you have the next step. You have the next assignment. You have the next assignment. He gave us the ministry of reconciliation. You have work to do. And it's not an empty work. It's a work that you have the, the spiritual gift working in you, working through you, empowering you. Verse 19 says, namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the, the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. He has committed to us the word of reconciliation. And this is how you need to make yourself a vessel of spiritual gift. Whereby the word of wisdom comes through you. Whereby the word of revelation comes through you. Where you exercise the spirit of faith, the gift of faith. Whereby you exercise the gift of healings. Praise the name of the Lord. You exercise the gift of healings in the same body to serve one another, whereby you exercise the gift of prophecy by the power of the Holy Spirit. These are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That God, you allow God to use you and you can pass his message to his body. You allow God to use you. You can hold hands with fellow brothers and pray. You make yourself available by living a sacrificial life whereby you are able to make yourself available in his assembly. And then he walks through you. And so he continues and says that he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Verse 20 says, therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. We are ambassadors for Christ. We are vessel for Christ. Through whom his Holy Spirit works amongst men. Through whom the truth of God is delivered to people 
and to his body. You become the ambassador for Christ with the spiritual gift to make impact in your workplace, to make impact in, your, in, the, in the marketplace. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were making an appeal through us. It's referring to the body. It's referring to believers. As though God were making an appeal through us, we beg you on behalf of Christ. This is apostles speaking. He said, we beg you. And I'm using the same word this morning that I'm begging you to be a vessel for the spiritual gift. I'm begging you this morning. I'm appealing to you. I'm not taking you away from your job. Even at your job, you can be a vessel. So we beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God. And so we, we, we see here that, you know, being a vessel for the spiritual gift is the same we're saying, be ambassador for Christ. Every ambassador is equipped. Is equipped. And we ambassadors for Christ, we are equipped with revelations. We are equipped with wisdom. We are equipped with, with, with the gift of faith. We are equipped with power for miracles. We are equipped. Unless we start to be sacrificial, that this becomes perfected in your life. Romans eleven twenty nine 29 says, you know, for gift of God, he said it's without repentance. The gift and talent of God, he said they are without repentance. And so we're saying today, we make ourselves available. We need to be sacrificial. The Holy Spirit will find you and walk through you. And walk through you. It is sacrificial. How do you become a sacrificial living? A sacrificial believer for the Lord's use. It is sacrificial to walk away from what is not pleasing to the Lord. It is sacrificial. What is not pleasing to the Lord. To denounce the pleasure to serve God. At the appropriate time of our life, appropriate time of the day, it is appropriate to denounce the pleasure and to serve God as a sacrifice. The Paul said, in Romans 12, verse 1. Sacrifice. And it is by the power of grace that is upon our lives for the effect of salvation for souls. I saw also in 2 Timothy the word of Paul Apostle Paul to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter, chapter 1 chapter 1 from verse 7 sorry I'll take it from verse 6 because this is someone who has surrendered himself to the ministry. And he says, having referred him to his foundation, it reminds him of his foundation. It reminds him of his foundation, of his faith. And he says, for God has not also for God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and of love and discipline. And of love and discipline. I can imagine someone who come from his hometown into the city 
While you are in your hometown, you are a child of faith. But you have come to the city and you have become a different person. You need to be reminded this morning. In fact, you are serving in the choir, but now you are in the city. You have become a different person. You grew up from the household of faith. You have become a different person. You need to, to, to pray that God, you know, re restore you as that vessel for his use. We saw what Paul said here. He referred him to his mother and his grandmother. He said, I know where you're coming from. But do not subject yourself to the spirit of timidity, but of power and of love and discipline. Verse 8. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel according to the power of God. Join me in suffering for the gospel. Many don't want to suffer for the gospel, but they want the glory of the gospel. They want the glory of the gospel. Some don't want to be acquainted with the gospel, but they want the grace that comes through the gospel. It's not like that. You need, there is more, there is more, there is more that the Lord can use you. There is more. So Paul is saying here, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord or of me, his prisoners, but join me in suffering for the gospel according to the power of God who has saved us and called us with a holy calling. He has saved us and called us with a holy calling. He gave us a total transformation. He gave us a total transformation. And he says, not according to our works. Not according to our works. But according to his own purpose and grace. Which was granted to us in Christ Jesus from all eternity. And this has been revealed. So we need to make ourselves available. And the challenge is for us to live a sacrificial life. The ability to plan your time. The ability to give your time. The ability to know the set time and to submit to the waters which cost you nothing. And this is what the Lord wants us to know. For the edification of the body and for the victory of the ministry and to have impact in the lives out there, we need to be a vessel of spiritual gifts. No matter what may be the hindrance, no matter what the level that you are in your faith, in your belief, you can still be used if you make yourself available. No matter what the problems that is going on in your life, because sometimes we are not able to serve God for two reasons I've observed. The need in our life and the sin in our life. That's what is keeping people away. The need in their life. What we want, what we want to achieve, the job we want to have, the materials we want to build up, the things of life is one of those hindrances. And then the sin that is in our life is drawing us away from being sacrificial to be of Lord's use. Paul said somewhere, he says, he that is called, let him serve in the very condition for which he is called. Because you are called, it doesn't mean that there is no sin in your life. But if you submit yourself with the very sin that is still going on in your life, you shall be delivered. 
Otherwise, you'll be lost. And so there is no, even the, the, the need that is, that you, you the, the, the needs in your life should not hinder you from, from making yourself a vessel because this spiritual gift is free. He said, come to the waters. Come to the waters. You without money, come and buy, come and receive. When you make yourself available, you will see a transformation and the glory which he spoke about will manifest in your life. I, I ended up my teaching last week from John chapter 4. A woman, the woman of Samaria, who lives with a severe condemnation, encountered the Lord. She said, I will not give you water because I'm not worthy. The water is the service of that woman. Yet, she received an eternal life water. Jesus wants you to come the way you are to him. And make yourself available. Make yourself available. And he says again, as I will close with this. In Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16 verse 24. Jesus said to his disciples... He said to his disciples, not any other person, he said to his disciples who have been working with him, and he said to them, he said, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself. He must deny himself. He must deny himself. And take up his cross and follow me. And the same word is meant for us today. It's meant for us today. If the Lord can say that to his disciples who are within 24 hours. I believe the same word is much more for us who come to church every week. It's much more for us who enjoys the grace and the benefit of redemption. Who has been made free from every form of condemnation. You have been made free from every form of condemnation. Why don't you make yourself available and rescue those who are still in condemnation and bring the word of peace to those who are still in condemnation. Members of your family who are still in condemnation. You have to make yourself free to receive the word of knowledge, the word of life, the bread of life that you are able to share with people and you are able to hold hands and they can experience God in their life without you having a title. That's the spiritual gift of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't need your title. You don't need a title. You, don't, you, you just need to be sacrificial and make yourself available. You will be of the Lord's use. I said you will be of the Lord's use. Hallelujah. So you need, no matter what your cross is, you take up your cross and follow Christ. Take up your cross and make yourself available with your cross. You will not feel the weight of the cross. You will feel the grace. Hallelujah. You will feel the grace. You, you, you will feel lighted. No matter what it is. And you will see transformation in your life. Transformation in your family. Transformation. Everything become new. Evident in your life when you open yourself up in the name of Jesus. Therefore, you need to be humble. You need to be humble. Sacrificial living requires that you're humble. And I'll close with this scripture in Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. If we want to be a vessel for the Holy Spirit's gift, Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, Kindness, humility, 
gentleness and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also you do. So also you. Praise the name of the Lord. And I'm picking out there that we need a level of humility to be sacrificial, to be submissive, to be submissive. We need it. We need a kindness. We need a compassion. But more importantly, we need humility. We need humility. Without humility, you cannot serve with spiritual gift. For God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. This is the word of the Lord. Make yourself available. Be a vessel of the spiritual gift. Certain problems will disappear in our community. We can tell the truth in our community. We can give directions. We can give, we can give wisdom. We can give you know, the word of knowledge. Word of wisdom we can give that will alleviate problems in our community. We can give prophetic word in our midst that we give comfort to families that are struggling, that we give comfort, that we give confidence to those who are going through issues, those who are going through sicknesses and diseases. We need the word of knowledge. We need the, the prophetic word of God that will reveal the, word of, the will of God to heal people. But we need to be ready to deliver. We need to make ourselves the vessel to be the instrument for the things of God. May God bless you this morning. In the name of Jesus, let us rise and let's pray. May God bless you for watching and listening to this message. Let's pray unto the Lord in the name of Jesus. Each end of this, we just give you praise. We give you all the honor and glory. Lord, we receive of your word this morning. We receive of your word. We open our hearts this morning. We ask, O oh Lord God, that let your Holy Spirit take not away your Holy Spirit from us. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Lord of Lord, King of Kings, Heavenly Father, we worship you. We give you honor and glory this morning. We submit ourselves before you this morning as a living sacrifice, Almighty God. To be a vessel for your use, to be a vessel for your work, to be a vessel, O oh Lord, in our community, in the body of Christ, Almighty God. We ask, O oh Lord God, fill us, O oh Lord, this money. Fill us, O oh Lord, this money. In the name of Jesus, let your Holy Spirit come. Let your Holy Spirit come. Let your power come upon us. In the name of Jesus, we come before you, O oh Lord God. In, every, in whatever circumstances, whatever we are going through, Lord, we bring it to the feet of Christ this morning. Whatever is a cross that we carry, whatever is the judgment, whatever is the issue, we come with the cross. We come with our cross. We lay it before you, Jesus Christ, this morning. In the name of Jesus, we are ready for your use. We are ready for your use. We are ready for your use, no matter what the circumstances is, no matter joblessness, no matter the poverty, we come, we submit ourselves to your cause, for we are the ambassadors for Christ. We know that we shall be lacking nothing. We shall be lacking nothing. And therefore, Lord, we position ourselves, we submit ourselves to you this morning, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, have your way in our life. Have your way in our activities. Let your Holy Spirit help us to organize ourselves, to make decisions, O oh Lord God. Help us, Almighty God. We come to the waters of your ministry. We come to the waters of ministry. We come to the waters of your mercy. We come, Almighty God, to receive of your mercy this morning. To receive of fresh grace to serve you this morning. Lord, have your way in our life. Have your way in our life. Have your way in our life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Each end of days, we glorify your name. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Just worship him. Just pray unto him this morning. Lord, grant me the grace. Grant me the grace. Grant me the enablement. The enablement to be available. 
grant me the grace, O oh Lord, to denounce whatever may be hindrance, to denounce it, to denounce it, whatever may be hindrance, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. We have to pray this morning that Lord, remove every trace of pride from my life. Remove every trace of pride. It shall not be an hindrance for me to be a vessel. Whatever Lord God that may be taking your place in my life has become the source of pride. Lord, this morning we humble ourselves. We, we give away, oh Lord God. We turn away. We turn away. We turn away from whatever it may be standing in between my life and serving you. We overcome this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I give you praise. I give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Let's put our hands together. Let's put our hands together. God bless you as you receive this message today. And I know that as we reflect on this message and we open our hearts and we come into his presence with expectation, we will be seeing changes. The Holy Spirit will be working with his gift in us as it is for the benefit of the body and so it shall be for the benefit of our life. The Bible says he orders the step of the righteous. And so the Holy Spirit will order your step to where you will find favor, to where you will find peace, to where you will find your destiny. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. In this, we give him praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Give him a clap of rain. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I believe it's a giving. Okay, yes, uh, let's bless the Lord with a mission offering. Let's bless the Lord with your mission offering. God bless you. Thank you, O Lord. Receive the offering that we have given this morning, this afternoon, for your mission work. Lord, from the abundance that you have given us, we have brought to you.